And just like that, we are live. Welcome everyone. Let me turn that down to another Tower of God live reaction. I would like to welcome everyone. Glad to have you here. Cake Pie says late. It is 8.45 and I am live. <laughs> All right. I never said I would go live right when it turns 8.45. So you know what? I don't want to hear it. Okay. I'm here and I'm on time. Okay. Let's just get that straight. This chapter is epic. Oh, shoot. Okay. Dude. Okay. <laughs> okay. Here's the funny thing, right? Every week someone says that and they're not wrong, but for some reason it gets me excited as if it's not going to be epic, as if it's not going to be hype. I'm like, oh, really? It's like, duh, it's Tower of God. Anyway, welcome everyone. Oh, dude, the chat blew up. Uh, what's going on? We have Ishmael, JV's, uh, Yal, Silly, CGS, JDB, and a ton of other people. Hello! Joshua, I'm not, Joshua, why are you calling me that? All right, Joshua, come on. Why are you calling me that? Oh, the chat is not on the screen. Let me go ahead and fix that real quick. Um, okay. As far as this chapter goes, I'm hoping for a few things. You know what I'm saying? I'm ho there we go. The chat, there's the chat. I didn't forget about you guys. I, I didn't forget. I've been using this, like, this setup for a lot of my, uh, like, update videos and stuff. Or just a lot of my videos lately in general. So, I always turn off the chat and then forget to put it back... But, uh, but we're good. We're good. So last week, all right, well, I'll give it a couple more minutes just for people to arrive. Uh, but dude, oh, shoot, here we go. We got more Tower of God, bro. It's crazy. It's crazy. Let me go ahead and post in the Discord. Relax, yeah? I'm gonna say, guys. We're live. Boom. Bye. Anyway, my thoughts on this week. My thoughts on this week's chapter. My thoughts on what's going to happen. First of all, let's go ahead and do our usual uh, our usual little uh, recap that we usually do here for the, the chapters. Last week, the big thing that happened was Chonhi. Dude, I've said it time and time again. One of my favorite parts about Tower of God, one of my favorite things about this story is the focus on the side characters. SIU always, always knocks it out of the park, making sure the side characters feel, ge you know, genuine, make them feel like they matter, that they're their own characters, they're not just there for fluff, they add, like, a lot to the story, you know, uh, which is super exciting and super fun, so it was super, like, okay, we all know that Hots is a side character who's sticking around, you know? And we know Rack and Kuhn, they're like main characters. But like someone like Chon He feels almost like bordering the line between side character and minor, you know, character. So it was really awesome that she got like pretty much an entire chapter uh, or half a chapter devoted to, to her. I thought it was so cool. Joe, I made it finally. Welcome, Benji. Happy to see you again. Hello from Indonesia, says Alip. Welcome. We have Light and Blau Blau for our mods. fan frickin tastic Let's go. I gotta say, too, Hasacha's character, at first I thought she was very, like, you know, I was like, really? That's her character? Just kind of being lazy and wanting to just kind of laze around? But the longer I thought about it, and I, I heard a couple of other people's opinions on this chapter, it it's perfect. Like, it's literally perfect. She's a feline, right? And that's what felines like to do. But even aside from that, like... It makes sense that there are people in this universe who, when finding, uh, you know, wealth or when finding power that that will make you satisfied or, or you know, you'll be set for life essentially with this new power that's been given to you, you know, I, you know, it makes sense. That's like, you know what? I've achieved it. I've worked hard. I'm done. I'm just gonna like, what's the point of even trying anymore? There's nothing. I'm not really. I don't have any goals, you know, like, I'm, I don't care, you know, so it's kind of cool that she, her entire, like, her entire ability showcase and her entire character is, like, based around that feeling. Jeremy Joestar, thank you for the $10 super chat. Here's an idea for a video. Which 10 families might defect from Jahad since we know not all of them were on board with him being king? Plus, Poe Dao versus Lopobia might push them to pick sides. I actually love that video idea because it's almost a headcanon for me that there, when you have the 10 families, right, you're going to have, it, it almost makes sense for me that you're going to have like some kind of a, 
of a split, right? Like, that some families are more pro-Jihad than others, you know? Like, obviously, we, we from our understanding of history, most of the families were very pro-Jihad. But to me, it's like, it seems like a lot of them wouldn't have been. You know what I mean? So uh, that's a great video idea. Thank you. Jeremy Joe Star. I'm actually going to write that down so I don't forget. <laughs> I'm always looking for video ideas. You know what I'm saying? Which families are pro God? Okay, boom. Thank you, Jeremy. Okay. And I just love Chon He, bro. Chon He, so Chon He, they're both from the same family, right? But when you look at their mentalities and you look at what they're fighting for, the artwork, fantastic also. Um, and the character designs, I'm just gonna say it. I'm just I'm just gonna say it. The character designs, alright, on point. Um, her her entire thing, first of all, the name of the attack is every day is a substitute holiday. <laughs> freaking hilarious dude for chon he right for chon he like having someone there to fight for and to push you is exactly how she was able to break out of this which i think makes so much sense because there's only so much you can do alone you know what i mean there's only so there's only so far you can run like even in you know hasacha's backstory alone there's only so much you can do alone but when you have someone else who is counting on you not using you, you know, or, or whatever, but counting on you, like, as not even an equal, but, like, as a partner or a comrade, there's something about that, you know? There's there's a reason why if, if someone was expecting you to be somewhere on time and you're, like, half an hour late, you feel guilty because, like, you're, they were counting on you, you know what I mean? Like, there's some something pushing you. Now, maybe that doesn't apply to anyone. Maybe that analogy sucks, but you get what I'm saying. You get what I'm saying, dude. I w this freaked me out. I wish everyone would become lazy like me. Everyone forever. So in Hasacha's perfect utopia, everyone's lazing around, eating freaking cereal, and just lays that. Honestly, sign me up. <laughs> like, sign me up. That actually sounds pretty awesome. That sounds sick. Bruna, thank you for the super chat. I was super tired today, but for some reason, I'm not anymore. Joe, you cured me. Super excited for this reading. Well, I'm happy I cured you, Bruna. Thank you. Appreciate that. And the young family. Thank you for the super chat. Y'all check out Towers and Gods. Joe, have, hope you're having a good weekend. High five from Taz and keep up the good work. Thank you, young family. Yes, I'm going to talk more about Towers and Gods in, in a few minutes here. Thank you so much. Really appreciate that. Appreciate that. Bro, look at these panels. Like, you know, SI did a fantastic job drawing Hasacha. Like, the Hasacha panels, because she's a new character and the design, is it stands out. You know what I mean? Uh, but these Chon He panels, like, look at this one. She's not even in focus. Imagine spending, like, six hours, you know, or however, however long, drawing this panel. Freaking, you the shading, you add the sweat beads, you draw the outline, you know, the muscle fibers, and then you blur it. Like, that is dedication. Like, I like actually think about that. You spent hours drawing this one panel. And you just, you bring it out of focus, focus in on the knuckles. Like, like this is a, this is one of the craziest panels of the chapter. And it's like, it's, oh man, freaking SIU, dude. Freaking insane. You know, all major characters are kind of getting shafted because the white fight was okay, but predictable. And I wanted more story and dialogue between characters like Coon, Bomb, and Rack. I mean, I think we're going to get it. I mean, this entire story, we've had a ton of that. So I feel, I feel like the Cat Tower is really good because it's focusing on characters that haven't had that yet. Like Han Sung. Like Han Sung, I feel like, has barely had any development. We barely learn anything new about him. Every time he's shown up, it's been for like exposition and kind of just helping out. But like the Cat Tower provided someone like him and Hots, you know. I mean, Hots has had stuff, but it's been a long time, you know. Uh, and who who else? I mean, a lot about Chon He, you know. Uh, who, a ton of people that I can think of. Uh, you know, like even, even Cha. 
like, Cha is weird because he's a character that kind of showed up and was like, I'm helping you bomb. And I'm, I'm there for you, bomb. And I'm here, you know, do on. And that's kind of it. But then, like, his bond with Hots was, like, super sick, you know? Um, and, you know, seeing Karaka's army for the first time. And I just feel like it's okay if we don't get a ton of that on Bomb and Company. Because trust me, we're gonna get it. And we've gotten a ton of it already. So, like, it's kind of okay for me if we take a step back from it. Obviously not permanently, but... Benji, thank you for the super chat! Do you think there was a chance that Jihad might have placed a spy in Bomb's new team? Since he is meeting more high rankers and rankers who are joining his team. So happy to be here, Joe. Well, thank you, Benji. I mean, that's a fan... Well, thank you for the super chat um, and for the question, of course. I mean, that's a fantastic theory. I'm just wondering, like, does Jihad even need that? Like, makes sense, you know, sure. But does Jihad even... Does he even need like a spy you know i feel like jihad he he's taken action but is that action coming from a place of be of feeling threatened you know is that action coming from a place of like oh i gotta i gotta do something i feel like jihad one percent of him is like hmm this could be maybe possibly eh, perhaps an issue so i feel like would he go to the effort maybe i feel like maybe it wouldn't even be jihad it'd be someone working under jihad like a dory a Dory might be like, all right, you know what? Why not? You know, s send someone in there to, to monitor what he's doing. I mean, Bomb is working with people that he doesn't even trust. Like Yule and Kel, you know? So I feel like it, it would be pretty easy to be like, I'm going to help you. Like Arya, you know? So many characters are like, I'm here. Welcome aboard. You're a member of Bomb's team now. So I feel like it would be pretty easy to, to do something like that. That's a good idea. Towers and Gods is the best. I'm totally not biased, says Jedi. Totally not. It's not like uh, you're a cast member or, an, you know, psh, not like that. Not like that. I I'm sure, Jedi, if you weren't a cast member, you would still, you'd still say the same thing, right? Totally. <laughs> Happy to see you here. Yeah, no. Towers and Gods is absolutely amazing. Thank you, Light. Thank you. It's it's a lot of fun. I, I love doing it. Like Like I've said, it's become like, uh, priority of the channel like main focus of the channel you know um just because like obviously the other videos uh i i put a lot of thought into and, and stuff but it's like it's just too much fun it's like every day i'm like jot that down you know write that down you know and i gotta get this and that and then tell the artist this and it's just it's such a big part of like the channel now to from my perspective and you know in my headspace that i i can't you know i can't stop thinking about it but uh yeah thank you Hey, Pretty Pink, welcome. Welcome, welcome. All right, now, okay, let's talk about this Chon Hee backstory really quick, right? We all know that Chon Hee, she wanted to be a princess, but then Yuri came along and was like, I'm born gifted, and I'm just like great-grandmother. And, she, you know, Chon Hee was like, well, all right, <laughs> I'll settle for, you know, right-hand man to squadron commander. Uh, but, but one way or another, what I thought was super interesting is we learned a lot about the Ha family, which... Funnily enough, even though it's like one of the main families, quote unquote, in this story, we don't know that much about like growing up in the Ha family or like their values, how it, how it's like being raised as a Ha. And we freaking we freaking learned that like I don't know where it said. It said somewhere that uh like w women are like a rarity in the Ha family. Girls are rare in the Ha family. Like what? interesting i even i even double checked that like making sure the translation was right you know um and it is like they're i don't know it's, that's kind of interesting to me like i'm wondering if the meaning behind that is still like rare because they're more gifted or if it's like no they're just you know <laughs> they're just like way way harder to come by i don't know it's it's kind of interesting i mean what haas do we know of right we know jinsung we know nobik i'm gonna count nobik all right branch family i'm gonna count it okay uh, we know the Ha that was at the Namehunt Station that was working with Yuri. I forget his name. Uh, the Ha that trained Bomb, the A-rank regular. Uh, you know, the old man. Those are all men, now that I think about it. Um, but Ha Yura, Ha Yura is a female. We have Yuri, uh, Chon He. So, I mean, it's pretty even so far. Ha so, I don't know. I don't know. Interesting. I would want Victor or Fluxvolk in Tower of God. Bro, <laughs> I feel like Flux Vault, Flux Vault, 
in Tower of God? I don't know. That's like, like obviously the story is based off of Tower of God, but just imagining that's kind of like, oh shoot, <laughs> like how would that work? It's interesting. So then her absolute fan freaking tastic father is like, hey, take my daughter in. I know she's the, the daughter of a courtesan, you know, and I'm freaking, I'm not like high status or anything. I'm not nobility, you know, but, but take her in please. And like, Chon he thought he was always so weak and cowardly, but he was giving up his pride. He was begging, begging all for her. You know, it's like, he never gave up on her. Exactly. Like, it's just, and he never, she never saw him again. Like, bro. He was giving up his daughter because he knew that's what she wanted. Like, oh my God, man. Friggin' insane. Oh shoot, uh, Soccerboy22, thank you for the super chat. If you could see any character in Tower of God, who and why, do you mean from from Towers and Gods? Or uh, or do you mean uh, just in general, <laughs> like any character? Oh shoot, it's already nine o'clock, holy frick. Uh, if it's from Towers and Gods, uh, Damien, frog. I wish he was in Towers of Gods. I mean, freaking Tower of God. I'll say Damien. Uh, Benji, like the chapter and the stream. Absolutely. Thank you, Benji. Really appreciate that. That would be awesome. And I love the way this fight just ends, you know? <laughs> freaking Choni. Like, can we just talk about Choni, bro? Um, so the fight ends. She's... Okay, this makes so much sense, bro. It makes too much sense, right? Because... A, she's freaking lazy. She hates fighting. You know, all she can do is make people not want to fight. That's like her main thing. Uh, two, or B, whatever I said. Uh, you know, uh, Liboric. No, Yasracha wants Kalavan and Liboric to fight. So, making Chonhi pass is the only way to accomplish that. And C. What's the C? I can't even remember. There's another reason why. It makes so much sense. It makes so much sense, bro. I guess, like, you know, why would she care, I guess? You know? She's like, eh. Oh, right here. I don't want to put up hands on someone from my own family. I guess that's the third reason, you know? Yeah, you don't want to... You don't want to fight someone from your own family, you know? That's that's a little rude, so... I love this scene. Freaking, you know, Chonhi arrives, and she's like, I'm here! And he's like, I knew she wouldn't betray my trust. See, that's what I mean, man. She knew that Kalavan was 100% like, she's gonna be here. 100%. Not a doubt in his mind. Maybe a little doubt. But like, 99% like, she's gonna be here. So that's what pushed her. She was like, I can't. I literally cannot. I am physically incapable of not, like, trying my absolute best. 110% you know, to, to, to reach him. Bro, look at this freaking smile, bro. Look at this guy. He's like, Calvon smiling, dude? What is this? What is this? This Tower of God? What's happening here? And then Hansung and Lafav getting absolutely clapped. Lafav just getting stabbed. Lafav, bro, she's like ordinary ranker without her sniper bullets, dude. The sea urchins, which... <laughs> all right, some people were upset with my... All right, I'm gonna take a second to talk about this. Some people weren't exactly thrilled with my top 10 weakest rankers video from the nest. And I totally get it. You know, the video was made just because I was like, I'm just going to have some fun. I know I'm going to piss some people off, but who cares? You know, who cares? Um, and, you know, there was some argument about, like, why didn't you include the canines? And from my perspective, they're not active. Like, why would I include Jordan when he's literally locked up behind a cell? You know what I mean? And he's been freed, but he's blind. You know, like, why would I include him, you know, uh, when, when they're not even actively fighting in the nest? Um, whatever, whatever. It doesn't, it doesn't matter. But I said Kennedy's uh, spikes, urch sea urchins weren't exactly great, you know. But that's just me having fun. Like obviously they're still a threat, you know what I mean. But I, I like to poke fun. I like to poke fun. Freaking Liboric is terrifying. I always told you guys, do not underestimate this man. Lafave was just about to say, you know what? I got kids, man. I just met you guys. <laughs> You know, it's like, I understand Tower of God does this thing where she's like metagaming, right? Like, I understand Tower of God does this thing where villains always become good, but like, I kind of want to live, you know? So that makes sense. But then, Kalavan arrives. And what's super interesting about this scene is that Kalavan arrives, but without Chon He, right? And, you know, in Evankel's uh, circumstance, the three of them, Evankel, Lafav, and Hansung, were all trying to reach that same 
destination, the portal, which led to the Lopobia, um, or which led to, yeah, the Lopobia ship, right? Uh, they wanted to go there and destroy the portal, I believe, or just get to the portal. Um, but of course, they got split up because there was two portals and blah, blah, blah. But with Kalavan, there's only one Liboric location. So, like, did Chonhi say, hey, I'm going to go help these people? Maybe that's what's going on. So he arrives. He's like, I'm going to take out those e you know, as I like to say, those e off your shoulder. I know that's not how you say it. I don't care. I'm calling them e all right? Uh... And he just absolutely, he examines the battlefield. He says, fodder, fodder, main guy. Got it. And he goes in, you know, takes out fodder number one. Boom. Kennedy out. Boom. Done. Well, almost. Fodder number two arrives. Boom. Done. Was that a jab, bro? He was like, wait, that wasn't, you weren't. That was just a jab, right? Like that, just want to, just want to make sure. And he's freaking like, uh. And kaboom! Just freaking claps him into the ground. That man is dead. Or almost dead. One of the two. One of the two. And Kennedy's like, uh. <laughs> I love the details, bro. Look at this. She's she, that one little drop of sweat in the background. She's like, yeah, uh, I'm, you know, just gonna like walk away here. Unbelievable. What's this overwhelming pressure? And that's it. That's it, bro. And just like that, ooh, we got Kalavan in the thumbnail, boy! Kalachad, exactly. Kalachad, bro. Kalachad, easily the number one Chad in the entire tower. Hands down. Jihad, psh, come on now, come on. Yurik, come on, bro. It's Kalavan. It's Kalavan 100%. Don't get mad at me. All right, don't get mad at me. Daddy Kalavan says, says Hannah. All right, all right. I see exactly. I'm down for the Kalavan simping. I'm going to simp for Kalavan. Screw it. Um, but okay, we're going to hop into episode 104 of season three. But very quickly, before we do, I'm just going to give a very quick shout out to Towers and Gods. This week's episode was just so much freaking fun. You know, I mean, this is just one little shot. I, ran I randomly clicked. Like, this wasn't me showing us having fun. Like, the entire episode of every week is just so much fun. So if you haven't already, give it a try. Check out the latest episode because it's one of the best, in my opinion. I think you would enjoy it. It is freaking fun. All right. With that being said, Tow Tower of God episode 104 of season three, AKA chapter 521, boy. Yurik is the bigger Chad. Okay, like I, I'm down to accept that argument. But I, I gotta, I gotta stick with my boy Kalavan. I gotta stick with Kalavan, bro. Kalavan just brings an entirely different demeanor. I don't know. There's something about him, dude. There's something about Kalavan that I just, I don't know, man. All right, here we go. My live reaction to the new chapter. Let's get into it. I've, I've stalled long enough. It's been almost 10 minutes since it released. Let's do this. Sending him soaring into the ground. Can you soar down? Weird thought I just had. Okay. All right. Moving on. What is this overwhelming pressure? He's so hot. Oh. Warp Gate Chapter 3. Look at this man. Just staring down. An entire arm made of Shinsu, dude. Who's saying bravo? Is it Liboric? Bravo. Yep. Oh, the chat isn't on the screen. Thank you for the reminder. <laughs> boop, boop, boop. There we go. Apologies. Thank you for the reminder. Forgot to put that back. Okay, he's still alive. My boy is still alive. Incredible. Just incredible. This man is Obadal plus Coon. That is terrifying. Even demoted. <laughs> People always... <laughs> Hold on, I gotta say this. It's like demoting him does nothing to change his power, you know? And I like Boric knows this, but it's just funny that he's like, wow, you're still strong even when you're no longer squadron command. It's like, bro, what you Mayor said that last week too. He's like, you're no longer squadron commander. It's like, do you think that matters, dude? It's just funny. You're still the Kalavan who earned the position of Army Corps Commander with your fighting ability alone. That's an interesting point because that implies that many individuals like Yasracha were probably chosen for other reasons. Like maybe they had something that 
you know, like this Raja, he could create felines. He was a good leader, right? Or maybe someone had political influence. They were really close to, to this person and they got into this position because of this. And, you know, um, but Kalavan was just a beast at fighting. And so Jihad was like, we'll take him. We'll take that guy. Or a Dory, right? Why don't you join the Army Corps again? We have a lot of work ahead of us. If you come back to the Army Corps, I'll appoint you as a division commander. Division commander. Division commander, bro? No shade to the division commanders in Tower of God, right? But can I just read off some of the division commanders we have in this story? Ari Bright Sharon. Ha Chon He, right? Fusil. Haracha. Arya. Those are some of the other division commanders in this story. And you're relegating Kalavan to their level? This man's like, I'll have you work with uh, Hasacha on a project if you, uh, if, you, if you rejoin. It's like, bro, you're talking to Kalavan. You're talking to Kalachad. What are you doing, dude? What are you, what are you doing? Look at this beast of a man. It's, dude, I'm being blinded. Once you do, I'll give your division full authority to carry out missions on its own. Okay, that's, you know, okay, it's a decent offer. What do you say? This is a pretty good offer. You're not thinking of betraying Lord Jahad, are you? We have to remember, Kalavan's, you know, his main goal is serving Lord Jahad. I refuse. I refuse. Get absolutely wrecked, Liboric. Jihad is the only one I owe my loyalty to. He's like, you're not Jihad. Am, am I standing in front of Jihad? And I don't intend to leave the Army Corps either. But I can't just stand by and watch a commander who is willing to throw away the lives of his subordinates for his own gains. Sitting in a seat he doesn't deserve. Yo. I want him to kill this man. Strangle him to death. You know what I'm saying? Or Okay, a little dark. Sorry. Kill him. That's, that's not as dark, right? That's a little more... A little more PG, right? Uh, and then, Jihad will be like, you know what? You're back. I want that to happen. Come on. Because, Liboric, it, like, you're not a good leader. If you're just like, yeah, blow up, blow up the whole squadron. Who freaking gets like that? You're not worthy of respect as a soldier. Is that so? You will ruin this unit one day. Oh, shit. Ah, here we go, baby! How unfortunate. <laughs> The army always needs talented people. It's a shame to lose a great player like you. He's so confident, bro. This man is so confident, dude. He does There's no doubt in his mind that he's going to win this fight. Look at, look at his eyes. He's just like, all right, shame. That's it. You were a great player. Like a, you know, almost like a piece in a chess game or something. I mean, okay, calling him a player is more of an honor because it's like the master of the chessboard, but I don't know. Hey, Benji, two dollars super chat. Strangle him to death. Haha, <laughs> damn, Joe. I'm, t you know, I'm, I'm just saying, like, ki killing him would make everything better, in my opinion. Thank you, Benji. That makes two of us. I love Kalavon. Don't even care if he joins Bomb. I don't want him to join Bomb. I, that wouldn't make sense for his character. I, I like the fact that he like temporarily teamed up. You know what I mean? It was like, hey, you know, we're, we're, we're helping each other out just this once. And I want him to overcome this and then become Bomb's enemy again. I think that'd be great. That's, I feel like the, a good arc for his character. Bro, look at this elf looking spear wielding dude. Oh, he looks so cool though. Like, can we just stop and, can we just stop and be like, look at this. He's looking at Kalavan the same way Gustang looked at literally everyone else that's ever existed, you know? Just like looking, oh, a couple of insects, I see. It's like, bro, he's just like his daddy. He's just like his dad, bro. Teamed up, they walked in the same direction for a bit. Okay, fair, okay. But like Kalavan even said in his own words, I won't fight you, but after this we'll be enemies. You know what I mean? So, what is, you get what I'm saying. That's a throwing type. Is he a lightning spear bearer? He doesn't even know he fights. Bro, he's a coon. Of course he is. 
Oh my lord. <laughs> okay. Kalavan. Just imagining the fight theme in the fight theme in the background. Dodging the spear. Let's go, let's go. Wait, what? Oh, the spear is changing direction. Okay. It's coming back. Of course, nothing for Calavan. Look at this, he's just flying through the air like Peter Pan. It keeps coming at me. It's moving and reacting first. Fast. It's not enough to in it's not fast enough to intimidate me. Yeah. But in this kind of a small space, it's pretty annoying. Okay, okay, fair enough. A little annoying obstacle for the boy. Ooh, he caught it! He caught it with his bare hands. I guess one of his hands is made up. Look at this dude, I We just need to take a minute. Bow before the Kalavan, and then we move on. Alright, cool. Dude, oh I was j <laughs> I was joking. I was I was actually a hundred percent kidding about about her being like, oh, but that's legitimately what's happening. He grabbed it? He's kind of cool. <laughs> this is the fan base right now. This is every, I don't care who you are. Every person reading this chapter, this is you. This is you, do not deny it. I, that's it. Even Liboric is like, don't think you can take me down with this inductive javelin of yours, bro. Look at this guy. He's literally flexing with this Shinsu. <laughs> He's going, he's, <laughs> he's like, oh, do you see this? I have an arm made of shit. You want to, you want to see what I can do with? It's like, dude, <laughs> this guy. <laughs> oh, he threw it back. Wait, are you a lefty? Calavan, are you a lefty? Mad respect. <laughs> okay. <laughs> dude. Freaking Calavan said, take your spear back. I don't want it, dude. Well, that's anticlimactic. <laughs> These two are good opponents. I like this dynamic. I like it. I like it. But I, I like it because they both rarely show emotion. You know what I mean? The only time I can really remember Calavan showing like raw emotion was the, the last station when Bomb was getting away from him. And it was like the first mistake he'd ever made in his whole career. You know what I mean? And he was like, you know, you can't get away. Like he was yelling at bomb. And then of course, when his squadron blew up, um, but even then we didn't really get to see it on his face. It was more like his actions that, that displayed that. Dr. Bone, I have a question. Do you think he is a Pobedow sleeper in the army? No, no. Liboric is a Dory's lap dog. There's no way, but it'd be interesting. Your aim is terrible. <laughs> He was like, I don't think he was trying to hit you, Liboric. Shut up. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Uh. The glowing eye, though. He ducked the punch. He ducked the punch. The Shinsu punch. I don't like that. I don't like that. Aim's never been that great. <laughs> He's like, you know, I love these two. What the? Dude, these two literally are just like having a chill conversation while trying to kill each other. It's the best, bro. He's like, eh, that's why I'm a, I'm a fisherman. I'm not, I ain't a spear bearer, bro. <laughs> like, I, what do you think I am, a spear bearer? <laughs> He's like, yeah, you're right. I, yeah, <laughs> I'm not, not exactly great. <laughs> it's, it's awesome, bro. I didn't expect to hit you anyway. My talent is actually Crushing things, exactly. He's a Ha. <laughs> He's a Ha family in disguise, bro. He's an adoptive member of the Ha family. Jin Song adopted him, bro. <laughs> what the frick? Is he catching the blood? Wait, is he catching his arm? His Shinsu arm? Wait. Wait, let's go in. No, 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 no. Because he, he, he punched with his left hand here. Oh, he did catch. Oh, okay, okay. He did catch his Shinsu arm. Okay. Dude, Liboric, it, I told you guys. I've had people in my comments be like, eh, Liboric, eh, he's, you know, Liboric, eh, whatever. He's just a leader. You know, he's he's not going to be that strong or anything. It's like, dude, Liboric is freaking insane, dude. I've, when you say that he's related in some way to a Dory, you know, you just know, you just know. I imagine J. Michael Tatum is Calvin's voice. That would fit very, very well. Yes, J. Michael Tatum, for sure. I, I said last week, um, 
Hey, Dice. Oh, what? Daisuke Ono? Daisuke, did I remember that right? Daisuke Ono? Yes, I remembered! Daisuke Ono should be his Japanese voice. abso freaking lootly No question. What a reckless... Oh. Oh, thank you for the super chat. That was, that was the chat. Thank you, Dung family. What a reckless attack. Company Commander Kalavan, you must have underestimated me badly. Did you think that I earned my place as Army Corps Commander by pulling strings when I was incompetent? That's what I'm saying! That is le- SIU is talking to everyone who is, you know, Oh, Mashini! Oh, Yasracha! And the- Dude, I'm telling you, man. Yasracha? Mashini? Okay, Mashini's obviously a big deal, but I've always thought of, like, Boric as, like, This man is up- He's, I, in my opinion, the scariest one of the three. Look at this guy. Sorry to break it to you, but you're wrong. I made my way up here through skill alone. Ooh, he got a hit in. Ooh, he got the first hit. Ooh, okay. He got him good. He got him good. But Kalavan's a tank. Like Kalavan is absolutely a tank. You know what I mean? He 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 put his he put his stat points into defense. So I think he's gonna be okay. Ooh, he got him freaking right in the ch ooh. Ooh, that's gonna leave a bruise. You will soon regret barging in here so confidently. Look at this coon Pobadow boy, dude. This man. Ugh. He faltered a little bit, but he's standing. Dang, that was a that was just a punch, by the way. That was just a punch. Like that wasn't even like lightning shinsu or that was just a punch from Liboric. Damn. Damn. He put his stats in the Chad. True, true. <sighs> Oh, he, oh, even when he's recovering from a hit, he's like, eyelashes, finely tuned, hair in place, we good. Bro, look at this boy. Company Commander Kalavan, you think it was just a fluke that I took your place, don't you? A low-ranking guy came out of nowhere and suddenly became an Army Corps commander. You were low-ranking? You probably think I pulled some strings or buttered up one of the higher-ups, right? That's why you came in here with such confidence, even after losing an arm and being exhausted. But you're wrong. I did not get this far by luck or accident. Ooh, we got him again. <laughs> the reason my rank is low is because I've been hiding in the shadows, doing all the army's dirty work. Oh, shit! I love it when SIU does this because this isn't the first time we've seen this. We've seen this with, um, uh, like Han Song. Han Song could have been a high ranker, but he was like, I'm gonna chill as a ranker. I'm just gonna stay as the test supervisor on the second floor, bide my time, you know? Um, Freaking Levy, right? Levy was a regular who stopped climbing, you know, and other regulars that worked for Jihad stopped climbing so that they could receive orders and then, you know, uh, work for Jihad. It's like they could have went out and become rankers, you know what I mean? I am fully qualified for this position. <laughs> oh my, oh, he sent him flying. Oh, he said, okay, okay. Round one goes to Liboric. You know, <laughs> Hansel and the Fox were like, Kalavan, come on. It's like, you can't do anything, you know? Kalavan. Oh, did she get that spear out? Okay. Bro, what? Uh, Kalavan! Are you kidding me, Kennedy? What the frick? Kennedy's like, get, get up, come on! Bro, what is happening right now? Whoa, our Army Corps commander is damn strong. Oh, this man doesn't even have a scratch, bro. Is this whole chapter just gonna be this? Because I hope it is. Your spear. It's not a lightning spear after all. Huh? Kalavan, you good? Did you get hit in the head? That looks like lightning to me. You don't make a spear from electricity, but pull a weapon and instantly inject electricity into it. It's just an imitation of a lightning spear. Are you saying my spear is weaker than a lightning spear? No. I only have little data about you. 
but I'm sure you're stronger than most lightning spear bearers. You're not even a natural lightning spear bearer, but with your electric, but with your electrical attribute alone, you developed a skill that is as strong as a lightning spear. You're right. I underestimated you. Damn. So Liboric isn't even that great at it. You know, so he just takes real spears and, inje and injects them with electricity, and they're, like, just as strong? Okay. Okay. So Mashni is more talented? Watch. Freaking watch your mouth, bro. First of all, Mashni was literally injected with Jihad cells. So, you know, okay, that's kind of cheating, but okay. It's acceptable. I'm kidding. It's not cheating. Um, but also, that's just one asset of Liboric. We don't know what else this man has, uh, has up his sleeve. You're right, I underestimated you. I apologize for that. Dude, Kalavan said, I'm sorry, dude. Now let's get back to fighting. <laughs> dude, Kalavan's such a legend. Bowing to the man who wiped out his family, basically. His squadron was practically his family. Hey, Company Commander Kalavan, what do you think you're doing? I won't go easy on you just because you apologized. You don't have to go easy on me. I came here to avenge my subordinates. In fact, I feel relieved now that I've confirmed my opponent is strong enough to deserve respect. <sighs> Can we just stop and read that again? Holy frick. In fact, I feel relieved now that I have confirmed my opponent is strong enough to deserve respect. You got owned. You got you got owned, bro. Like, like just give up, Libor. Like, get up, Lib. Give up, Liboric. You're done. You've been defeated. Go home. It's over, dude. That one line and you're done. You're done. Holy, dude. Oh, thank you, guys. Thank you. I'm reading the chat. Thank you, guys. Thank you, Sergio. No talent in spear, but powerful? Exactly. Like, w what he's saying here, really quickly, is you're not even good at being a lightning spear bearer, and yet you're that powerful at it. You know what I mean? Like, it's not even like your natural thing, and you're still, like, up there with the others. That's a big deal. The dead ones wouldn't want this revenge to be too easy. I'll crush you with all my might. <laughs> oh! Essence of bravery! Here we go, dude! Okay. I told you not to underestimate me. I shouldn't complain. I shouldn't complain because we got a whole freaking 75% of the chapter. Oh, dude, I need more, man. I'm so invested, dude. Oh, there's there's too much happening. There's too much happening. We gotta cut. We gotta cut. We gotta cut. We gotta cut. We got we gotta do it, bro. SIU, he's pulling the he's doing his thing. Alright. Bombs side. Inside the huge suspendium. And Arari, yes, that is his name, also got transported. I believe. Oh boy, look at all that. Is that all suspendium? Holy frick! This is what they make lighthouses out of, by the way. Fun fact. Who we got? Who we got? Vicente, Rack, Kuhn, Bomb, Huaryun. Wait, that's Vicente. Is that is that you? Huh? Aria. Is who is? That's freaking Yule. Why is Yule there? Wait, what? Where the frick? It's Yule's. It Hold on a minute, bro. What? Since when? Since when was Yule there? What? I do not remember that. Oh my gosh, he's right there. I've been blind this whole time. I thought I knew who the squad was and I was wrong. Freaking Yule is there. Sorry, this is important to me, okay? I got, it's important that I get this sort of thing right. I didn't know Yule was there. No, Hockney and Elaine are still fighting Mr. Krabs, as far as we know. That's so weird. Why didn't I... He's right... No, right here. 
Right here. That's Yule, and I thought it was Vicente. See? Yule. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. One, two, three, four, five, six. He's off panel. Vicente's off panel. It tricked me. This panel tricked me, bro. This panel tricked me. I thought there was only six. All right. I'm just explaining why my stance was the way it was. Now we can move on. All right. All right. There's Vicente. He's wearing the he's wearing the schoolboy shirt. Okay. So, this is the inside of the huge suspendium. That is freaking terrifying. Jeez. There seems to be nothing but the suspendium, though. But Princess Mashni told us to find something here. All right, here we go. Here we go. What, it, what does she want to find? <clears throat> Samson says it's weird how little dialogue Yule has had. Yes, but also he is still very important. He's the one of the. He's the only connection we have to the boss. So, you know, maybe it's down there. Oh, this panel looks sick. I don't know why. Bomb looks sad. Bomb. Bomb, you need a hug, bro. Coon, give him another hug, man. I know it's been like, you know, freaking less than a day, but he needs another hug. Maybe it's down there. It better be. Honestly, I'm more curious about how we can get out of here than what's in this place. Someone's here. Arari. Freaking Snake Boy! Are we gonna have Snake Boy versus Snake Boy? Just kidding, Yule would get absolutely owned. You definitely seem. Wait, this isn't. Wait, this isn't. This is. Oh! Someone's speaking to Bomb! Someone's here. You definitely seem qualified. It, I swear to God, if Bomb is about to get a new power, feels like. There's no. There's no freaking way, dude! There's no way, bro! Dude, what? Come on, come, you can accept me. Dude, at this point, powers are lining up outside of Bomb's house, knocking on the door, being like, please, accept me, bro. Come, you can accept me. I will lend you my power. It feels like someone is calling me. Let's take revenge on Lopopia. <gasps> Who the frick is this? What is this? This has to be connected to something we've already known. Let's take revenge on Lopo Bia? Is it connected to Yama's father? No, that wouldn't make any sense. What, what, what the frick would it be? Let's take revenge on Lopo Bia? We're here to reach you about your power's extended warranty. Literally, literally. Bomb! Dude, Bomb was like getting drawn in. What's the matter? You're staring at an empty space. Um, <laughs> I like that Bob is telling him, you know, in most comics, he'd be like, uh, it, it's nothing. You know, it's like, okay, here we go again. He's like, I heard a voice. Someone's, uh, <laughs> I'm getting called down there, so we better go. <laughs> and Kuhn's like, what? Uh, Kuhn, I think I hear a voice from down there. <laughs> a voice? Someone's there? You're scaring me now. <laughs> Kuhn's like, are you kidding me, bro? Uh-oh, uh-oh, that's Orari. It's even got green light, dude. That's a there he is. That's the boy. Oh, uh, someone else went with him. A random guard. There they are. Ah! They're all they're falling. Oh, and his dad is with him too. That person I saw him in the teleport ship earlier. He must be an enemy. He's a high ranker. Do not underestimate him. Damn it, this is a nuisance. Well, the main army will get us out of here when they arrive. Before that, we should take them down. Father! Here we go. Dude, I love his design. All right. What's his father gonna do? Run! Okay! What if he possesses Yule's hair snake thing? Bomb's going in. Okay. Uh, y Yorari. That's his name. This brat. I can tell that his power is no joke. Oh, he can see it. He can see it from a mile away. This guy is a branch leader, all right? Holy frick. They're unscathed. Coon, you can fly? <laughs> what are you? What are you? Just like, she's getting a ride. Oh, that is awesome, bro. That is awesome. 
Raccoon, you can fly? Yeah, somehow. I can fly too! Rack, you too? Oh, that's crazy, bro. They flew away. What about Vicente and Yule? What's going on there? I underestimated him. That kid is strong. He's just not- he's not just some regular that beats rankers. I mean, you said it right there. Regular that beats rankers? Come on. Oh, let's go after them! Yeah! Oh, this guy. Yeah! Hey, what the hell are you doing? Uh, I'm sorry. I hate to do this, but I can't fly. Aren't you a ranker? Okay, that confirmed that these random soldiers are rankers. How did you make the ship guard if you can't even fly? <laughs> My apologies, dude. This this random guard is the reason that they're all gonna get out of this. Are you kidding me? Oh, the irregular. Where'd they go? Damn it. We lost them. That's how it ends, bro. What the frick? We're ending with Bob and Coon and Rack flying around like Peter Pan, dude. And this random ranker is like, um, dude, is this like a recurring joke for SIU? He always does this thing where. Characters are like, oh wait, I can't fly. He's done that three times, as far as I can remember. In season one, all right, you can look this up, freaking during the fisherman test, and Dorsey kicks off one of the bird dudes, you know? Oh, no, 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 she kicks off Dayod, who has one wing. And she's like, oh, you can't fly with that wing. So that's like one joke. And then during the freaking dollar show, Hongjo, who's a bird, made that, you know, he was like, I'll save you. Oh, wait, I can't fly. And now this Raker's like, I can't fly. SIU likes making the flying jokes. I respect it, dude. I respect it. I respect it, bro. <laughs> this is my favorite part. She's literally, it's not even like she's grabbing onto him. She's literally just sitting there like, all right, you know, free ride. <laughs> she's just hitching a ride, dude. That's awesome. Uh, great chapter. I mean, you know, the bomb stuff was cool and all, but like the Colavon, bro, this guy, dude, this guy, I, I think I had him in my top five favorite characters. I made that video like a, a couple years ago. Easy, easy placement. It had been so long, so I had forgotten how incredibly epic this guy is, man. Colavon, man. Colavon is insane, dude. I love his character. His character is so fantastic, and I'm excited to see where the fight goes. Because obviously, Kalavan, well, both of them weren't even trying, you know? Kalavan didn't even activate, really, the essence of bravery. You know, and like, Boric is, he's using lightning spear, a lightning spear imitation when he's not even that good at it. So I'm excited to see where it goes. But let me know what you all thought of the chapter in the comments down below. And shout out to everyone who can make the stream live. I love reading the chat. Uh, the queen is chilling, absolutely chilling. Is Bomb stronger than Kalavan? Someone made a great point about this, in that when Bomb was fighting White, he barely won with the help of Kun and Rack and while burning souls constantly, right? So if he's that extreme, that crazy mode, burning souls, using everything, I believe so. Because, you know, Bomb can kind of just be as strong as he needs to be, in my opinion, and I've heard other people say that as well. But, like, generally speaking, it's like, ah. Uh, uh, you know, I don't know. It's like, it's a hard, you can't really say. It's like, Bomb can, he's up and down, you know what I mean? When Bomb is at his peak, yes. Otherwise, probably not. But, uh, yeah, thank you for watching. Thank you, everyone, for super chatting. That was really appreciated. And I will see you all next week for the next Tower of God live reaction. Check out the previous Towers and Gods episode and also this week's Friday episode because it's gonna be crazy gonna be a crazy one. I'm so excited. All right. Take care, everyone. I'll see you then. Peace. Oh, wait. Rock, paper, scissors. All right. Rock, paper, scissors. Shoot. All right. Boom. I beat paper. Freaking you lost. I know you all lost. All right.